Okay, good evening, everybody. If you would please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we have Pastor Lake with us tonight. Would you give us a blessing, please? Dear Lord, as we come to you tonight, you say in the word of God in James 1 5 that if any of us lack wisdom, let him ask of God. We're asking you tonight, Lord, for wisdom, not only for the commissioners, but we as the citizens of Hampshire County give us wisdom and how to do your work and how to do what you've asked us to do. Pray that you guide our hearts and our minds. Help this night to be uh, beneficial to everyone. Your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Chaplain. <laughs> Chaplain, Pastor. All right, welcome everybody to the Hampshire County Commission meeting Tuesday, June 27th. Uh, we will open the meeting and uh, start with the minutes. The commissioners have had a chance to review those digital so I would entertain a motion to approve or make any corrections needed at this time I move that the minutes be approved as presented second okay it's been moved and seconded that the minutes from our last commissioners meeting be approved as presented all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. motion passed Oh, and I'll welcome anybody that's online with us as well, and just remind everybody that we are also live online too, both the commissioners and anyone who comes up to the table here. So we'll move on to the reports, uh, President's report. Um, I'll start off, I had the Quarterly, quarterly meeting with our elected uh, officials. It's a committee we uh, put together back in the fall, and uh, the elected officials uh, and myself uh, uh, leading that meeting. We think it's wise for us to, to meet quarterly for a better communication and uh, just to help the county run smoother. Uh, this past one was right after our last commissioners meeting uh, not too much uh, to address in that one we had just finished the handbook and updated that which the Commission approved uh, I think the meeting prior so uh, wasn't a whole lot there uh, everyone seems uh, content and and happy with the, the few changes that we made uh, through the clerk's office as, as far as uh, paperwork uh, between the, the commission and the clerk's office and uh, some of the other departments uh, that seems to be going real well and the uh, clerk reported that he's very satisfied with that as well uh, next meeting I had was uh, Parks and Rec um, a few things to report there the uh, old Cape and Bridge Junior High building um, did get the uh, AC and heating units uh, completed there. Um, they had applied to us for ARP funds and, and used that to update those. Uh, one of the units there, we had a, a leak problem there on the roof. Um, I believe that's been uh, addressed and taken care of, but uh, they are working through uh, uh, taking on an old building there and they're uh, doing a pretty decent job of it it's uh, a challenge as as we all know but uh, there is there is interest, uh, quite a bit of interest in that building and they have uh, quite a bit going on there um, of course our sheriff's office is down there uh, hardy net is down there um, the uh, one of the land trust nonprofits uses some office space there um, Riverhouse 
nonprofit uses some office space there. So, uh, and then in addition, all the uh, available uh, rental rooms in the gym and stuff gets used on a pretty constant basis. So, uh, they're working through the the uh, ins and outs of making that building serve the community, which uh, that's why they took it on. They they thought it would be too big of a loss for the community there not to have that. So work with them. Um, you know, they're not going to be able to do it for, for free, but uh, they're going to try to keep it uh, to where it can serve the community well. Um, the Parks and Rec building at Hampshire Park um, is uh, very active this summer. Um, it's it's being rented uh, on a steady basis, um, being used for uh, everything that they had planned it to be used for and more. Um, bingo is, is pretty popular there. They will continue to do that and, and make that effort to, to make that even better, but it is, seems to be pretty popular. Um, not doing it as often here in the summer with everything else that's going on and everything else that the building's needed for, but uh, there's definitely the interest there to keep that going. Um, back down to Cape and Bridge, the uh, outside basketball court there has been repaved, and within the next week or so, um, pickleball lines will be on the court there, and then they're gonna uh, get nets and stuff. There's quite a bit of interest for for pickleball, um, they get a lot of questions about that. So they decided to, when they redid that court, to make that a pickleball court along with the basketball court instead of a, a tennis court. Um, CVB meeting, I went to that today. Um, just some quick uh, uh, review there. They are doing their farm crawl again. Uh, like they did last year. That's coming up here in July in a couple of weeks. The, uh, the farm crawl part of that day was very successful last year. They did try uh, to have some music there afterwards, which was not as successful, but the uh, visit in the farms was um, pretty good turnout for that. And they have over 30 farms this year that want to showcase what they do or give a tour or whatever. So. There's two days in July there. You can go to their Facebook page and see all about that, that, that you can visit farms in Hampshire County. Um, and then just, you know, uh, uh, with their new executive director, there's quite a bit of media presence with the uh, CVB now. And um, I, I think they're, they've stepped it up in the last year and a half and continue to do so. so I, I would uh, commend them for their, their efforts there. Tomorrow I got Region 7 Workforce Meeting and Livestock Committee meeting as they're getting ready for the fair here in about a month. Commissioner Hott? What historic land march are you going to do that? What's that? The historic land march, are you doing that one tomorrow? I can if you want me to. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Okay, I had uh, the first meeting I attended was the Region 8 Planning and Development uh, Council meeting. Uh, mainly the, uh, what we done there was we elected the new officers for the, for the upcoming year. And then we had a report from the, from the director uh, concerning the bid openings on the Purgisville uh, water project. And the bids came in uh, under budget uh, we was, we was pleased to, we was pleased about that. Uh, last night I attended the Eastern Action Agency meeting uh, in Moorfield. Uh, the only thing we done there last night was was uh, approve a uh, uh, commitment to the uh, Judy family for uh, leasing the old Eastern Building Supply uh, building uh, for the. Uh, Development Center for the head for the Moorfield headquarters for the Eastern Action Agency. Uh, and then, other than a few phone calls, that's all I have to report. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Hot, Commissioner Cannon. I uh, did uh, 
we didn't meet this month with planning, but I did uh, talk to the compliance officers and uh, just get a little brief for the commission. Uh, of course, we haven't tabulated June yet, but last month we had uh, another pretty good month for the county, uh, 3.74 million in construction and 113 permits. So uh, the county's definitely growing in the residential sector, if you will. Uh, talk to the addressing department, Mr. Cox, and uh, just wanted to brief the commission just about how many addresses we were doing a week just to kind of form a picture of, you know, to go with planning. And uh, after he tabulated everything, we're, we're doing approximately five, four, four to six uh, new addresses a week, which is a pretty fair amount. New homes being uh, certified for occupancy. I also attended the uh, Hampshire County Development Authority meeting. Uh, we had uh, elections. We do have a new president, Mrs. Rebecca Hott, uh, and uh, Eileen, I believe will be done at the end of the month. Uh, as the commission knows, we did secure her to, to come back uh, to, to consult with Mr. Hot as needed, uh, audit time or for, for questions on projects to help get traction. Um, let's see here. Just a few things. Um, the uh, um, demolition, uh, June 26th started. Uh, I drove by there, so if you're, if you're on the road there, um, you're not going to see a lot on the outside. They've started on the inside. Today. Yeah, or yesterday, I believe, because um, that's the first thing I said. I said, I said don't let me brief the commission, and <laughs> I'm a, I've had my foot in my mouth a lot on this project. As, as we know, it's drove me nuts, and a lot of, lot of us are frustrated, but they are there, and then the states come around to work with us. To, they, they paid a heavy premium to speed the project up from 70 days to 40 days. So everybody's kind of all hands on deck. The Ed Morgan called me today and of course I had drug court graduations and a couple other meetings in this meeting. The SBA and the school board uh, were touring all the school campuses and they wanted to ride by there. Um, I wasn't able to meet with them but I think we're all on the same page and uh, tensions are starting to simmer down a little bit which is good um, June 15th sort of a soft closing for the asset transfer with Cape and Bridge uh, some other good news that Eileen had reported in the, in the DEP funding uh, this new funding there's there's twenty thousand dollars available to help us with previous ineligible billable items um, so, so we can sort of go after some things that we weren't reimbursed for, if you will, with this 20,000 allocation. So that'll help soften the blow a little bit. Uh, as far as marketing, I don't know if anybody watched the Miss West Virginia pageant, but our uh, development authority ads were on there. And uh, so I think that those ads have really taken a, a lot more traction than maybe they thought they would. So it's really been a good investment um, and it's hard to tell how many thousands of people seen our marketing videos. So that was that was pretty impressive to see that on a, on such a big platform. Also, uh, the team, if you will, and Rebecca Hot uh, have presented a young entrepreneur's idea that uh, we're, we're getting the banks involved with. I don't know if anybody's watched Shark Tank, but sort of having young entrepreneurs propose their business ideas and see, you know, we'll pick a winner and, and, and it would be sort of like a grant, not a loan. Uh, there won't be any ownership exchange with the banks or anything like that, but I thought that was a really cool idea. Uh, Rebecca's done a lot of travel and stuff for the, the board and talked with a lot of highfalutin development, economic development people that have planted a lot of seeds in our minds and give us some good ideas so I thank her for that work. Um, other than that, uh, the, the PBTA sent me pretty good news. Uh, in DC, Washington DC issued a press release. Uh, 
have it here. Uh, Grant, Hardy, Hampshire, Mineral, Pendleton comprise the PBTA transportation system. And uh, we got together when we realized that some of these grant funds were available. Uh, and uh, we created what we're calling and what the state and federal government are calling the Potomac Highlands Hydrogen Fuel Initiative. So overall, uh, $25.8 million in, in, in transportation projects awarded. Uh, Senator Manchin's office and Senator Capito's office announced, of which 4.57 million will be awarded to our recently created Potomac Highlands Hydrogen Fuel Initiative. Just to, briefly, I, I know I've talked, the commissioners know a lot about it, or, or they've heard me talk a lot about it, but uh, in short, this project will design a solar powered hydrogen fuel plant in two main phases. Phase one will include the construction of a photovoltaic array to provide the electricity for the electrolysis hydrogen production plant and phase two will include the development of facilities that will support the compression and storage of the hydrogen on site its delivery to on-site stations for hydrogen fuel cell powered transit vehicles so we're going to manufacture the hydrogen we're going to store the hydrogen we're going to sell the hydrogen we're going to use it on our own fleet and then in due time, hopefully sell to other fleets. We, we did a lot of research on this. There's, there's blue hydrogen and green hydrogen, and I'm definitely not a proponent of the, the, you know, the one where you're energy negative using natural gas and things to make hydrogen, and then and, and when you compile the data and get to the sums of where you're at on the energy, you're in the negative. But this form of hydrogen fuel uses, the, as, as I explained, the photo Voltaic array system, which is energy pos positive from from our research, and uh, back during COVID, we had a lot of trouble getting the diesel buses, uh, any bus, whether regardless whether it was diesel or not. And we had toyed with the idea of getting these electric buses, being that there's so much funding out there. But we, being conservative and doing our research, kind of let California and other states be the guinea pigs, and everybody soon realized that these lithium battery buses are more or less useless especially in a mountain state like this you know you get maybe a hundred miles and you know if they're breaking down in southern california on the side of the road what are they going to do here and not only that they're they're another hundred thousand dollars more than the buses we're used to buying so we we kind of bided our time waited for a better option and this this hydrogen fuel cell system i think is really going to be state-of-the-art um, the, the only byproduct to the whole thing is water vapor and oxygen. So very cool. Uh, it's going to be in, in Grant County Commission stepped up to the plate and, and, and put forward a piece of land uh, there in Petersburg. So it's, it's kind of cool to work with all these other commissioners and, and uh, you know, bring some of the tax money back <laughs> that we've all paid um, for, for a new cutting edge technology like this. Um, I did also meet with Delegate Thorne and Hillenbrand. They're definitely concerned about the Senior Center, which I understand, and so am I, and so are, I think I can speak for all the commissioners. Um, and I did talk with Matt Hodd and, and, and the other interested party that kind of backed out in bidding the local contractors. Their concern was not doing it piecemeal. They wanted to come in two, three weeks, do the project, and be done with it. Um, so I think the big hoop to jump through there was Pat and Patty who we they, they make or break us they literally do I mean Pat's 80 years old and Patty's right there with him and we want to keep them happy so uh, thanks to Delegate Hillenbrand uh, he went to uh, the fire hall and we've secured a kitchen I should say nearly secure we haven't ironed out the details but uh, they are definitely very graceful and as long as we reimburse them for their gas and you know maybe we'll even negotiate a, a fee that we pay them to let our cooks cook there while the so, so we can re-entice these local contractors to bid and uh, save this county and the taxpayers a lot of money on on using local uh, he did also tell me that uh, the individual for our water mitigation project, as I'm calling it, on the senior center, the individual with the low bidder, we, if I remember correctly, we were going to take his bid 
um, as long as he produced his insurance and uh, uh, other proper documentation and, and license and et cetera. And I believe he did do that. So that's a good bid and that'll be starting very soon. So that's, that's good. Um, $1.2 billion announced for West Virginia broadband projects. I thought that that was noteworthy. Um, I did attend the uh, day report drug court graduations today. I know that there's a lot of conservative citizens in this county that uh, sometimes think uh, day report is a waste of money and, and, and recovery is a waste of money. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that 100%. If, if you've seen these stories that I'm seeing, two, three times a year where we're having four, four to 10 graduates per graduation um, and, and getting these individuals back into the workforce. And with our match as low as we've kept it, basically running the whole program on grants, I, I definitely still think it's worthwhile to Hampshire County to, to keep this ship afloat. Uh, prosecutor said that the, uh, her second assistant prosecutor be starting next, assistant prosecutor be starting next month, so that'd be good. Um, other than that, Mr. President, I was going to go over the broadband. Mr. Cox did do a little bit of work or a lot of work on this briefing, but maybe we'll, since we have a little bit on the agenda, we could do that another time. I didn't want to. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep on moving and then. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Next, we have Allison Jewell, the director of the Hampshire County Farmland Protection Board. Evening. Hey, Allison. Um, so as you know, I'm here on behalf of the Farmland Protection Board um, to ask for approval um, to close on the Belmont Holdings, West Virginia uh, property that's on J.R. Reynolds Road. Uh, it's 396 acres, and there'll be one retained residential development uh, area on the property, and it adjoins uh, the 825 acre easement that we already hold um, on Jersey Mountain Road. Um, I sent you guys the aerial map and the survey. I know the survey was a little hard to look at on the, the digital form, but I have that if you want to see that um, or if you have any questions. I, I looked it over. I yeah, but we great. all received the, the digital copies that you uh, sent us, Allison, and it looked good looked good to me. Do you, okay. you gentlemen have any more questions or details? I move we approve the request. I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that the Hampshire County Commission approve the Belmont Holdings easement, J.R. Reynolds Road, 396 acres. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Allison, to put, well, not to put you on the spot, but do you have a, a, an approximate acreage that we've put into protection in the last, I'll let you determine. The it's over 5,000. Um, I don't have an exact number, but um, I think the last time I gave you that, it was, uh, it's over 5,000. Yeah. Okay. So I can get you um, a more precise number. We have closed uh, two in the last month, um, one, in, one in May and one in uh, the early June. So have added a few <laughs> yeah I did I just wanted to make a point you know that it seems like everybody that that has contacts me that's over 50 that, that doesn't want too much going on here and they don't want this to city and everybody under 50 says you know you're not doing enough to create jobs and so I'm I'm really in the middle and and you know it seems like I beat on the economic development you know horse a little bit more than the other ones but really what I like the public to understand is that as commissioners that's almost our our only power to to kind of protect our rural way of life and you know i did, if i wanted to live in the city i'd move there that's what i always said and i definitely don't want this becoming moorefield and i'll say that on the record mm -hmm. um, but i think all three of us are pretty big proponent of our rural way of life and i just wanted to you know yeah, thank Put you, Put a magnifying Allison. glass on that point, you know. <laughs> I'll always be for farmland protection and keeping Hampshire County as rural as we, as we can. 
We still have a good bit of interest in the program. I mean, we're working on, since we just closed two, we still have four we're working on, and um, we just submitted 11 applications at the end of May to the state. Um, and we have one active federal um, application that we're working on. So um, there's still a good bit of interest in the program, and we do what we can. <laughs> yeah, thank you for all you all do on that. That's a, I think it's an important, important part of the uh, Hampshire County moving forward. And I think one of the things maybe the public don't understand is that it's a very slow process. Yes. And when we, we do our ratings and, and uh, for all the different farms, it, it, it takes a while. And then when you get, if, if they get federal funding or state funding, then that also takes a lot of time. And it, it, we, as, as far as the Farmland Protection Board, I think we have done exceptionally well. I've been on there, I think I was on there eight years, and now I'm on there, I've been on there late, next two or three, or I've been on there two or three years after that. But it's, I think we've done real well as far as preserving the, the farmland. And it, 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 and it is difficult. You know, there's, there's times what the people don't know. We, we might get all the way to closing, and all of a sudden we have a glitch somewhere on a survey that, that we felt was right, and it turns out it's wrong. And so it, there's a lot of, there's a lot more involved than just what, what the public sees. It's a very lengthy, very complicated process. <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you guys' support. Clerk, do we have anything? It takes about five minutes there. Yeah. We get an annual contract renewal with Global Science and Technology. This one is for the uh, ambulance fee software and maintenance. Uh, we pay them about $2,500 a year to help us with our ambulance fee software. And then we also have one, uh, which is again, do it every year, the uh, Courthouse Network Support Administration Consulting contract directly benefits us when we need to uh, get a virus on our computers, whatever. These guys can promote in, fix it, they, they're, they're great. And uh, so two separate contracts there. Thanks. Everything was the same from last year. They didn't didn't note anything different there. Okay. Yeah. So, gentlemen, I'd entertain a motion to approve those two contracts for software and computer assistance. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And I'll just note this two separate contracts, but we did it with one motion. Okay. Clerk. Mr. President, while we have a minute, would you
would you mind if I read the uh, letter delivered to us by the Caton Bridge Library to the public? Yeah, go ahead. We have a minute here. Thought that uh, since the uh, public library took the time to write us a letter, Brian's or Commissioner Eggers was pretty good about that, so um, he's made me better about it. Dear Honorable County Commissioners, Hot Eglinger and Cannon, on behalf of the Cape Bridge Public Library, we extend our sincere appreciation for your approval of $15,000 for funding the need to replace our much needed roof for the library. Since 1995, when our library opened, the 25 year shingle has done its job, but has extended its life. We did our best to select three bids from contractors whose work matched the work that was required, including repairs of, wood, of the wood structure, architectural shingles, hauling away at old shingles, warranties, business license, and the town of Cape Bridge business license. We selected the lowest bid, one who has done reputable work in our town. We hope work will begin, will begin very soon. There was not a solution to this expense due to our stretch budget to support this monumental expense. From all of our directors at the library board, our library director, patrons, and the community we serve, thank you for this approval. Shirley Davey, Secretary, Cambridge Public Library. Thank you, Shirley, and board. Yep. Thank you for reading that there, Commissioner. And we are right on schedule. We will uh, move on to our uh, tabled item from last meeting, the MOU uh, regard Yes, MOU regarding the uh, pro grant, and do we have? Uh, Mr. President, I move that we we uh, remove that from the table and address it at this time. Second. Okay. It's, it's been moved and seconded that the uh, MOU regarding the pro grant be uh, considered at this meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. So again, uh, we uh, looked at this at our last meeting. Uh, the sheriff wanted to meet with the school board and iron out a few questions that uh, uh, at least one, I knew I, I as one commissioner had uh, and the sheriff had the same questions. Um, and uh, all three commissioners agreed that uh, the sheriff should meet with them. I, he did that uh, yesterday, I believe, uh, and perhaps maybe some today. Uh, they got that ironed out. Uh, a copy was sent to all three commissioners um, to review earlier. So uh, if there's not any further discussion or questions or details need noted, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve that MOU. Mr. President, I move that we approve the MOU uh, between the Hampshire County Commission and the uh, Sheriff's Department and the Board of Education. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that the MOU for pro officers uh, between the Hampshire County and the uh, Board of Education be approved as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. And again, just for clarification for the public, that is the uh, pro officers that would be um, for this MOU, one officer at Hampshire High, one at Cape and Bridge, and one at Romney Middle. Sad that we're in a situation in it. Yeah, yeah, it's just a matter of time, you know. I've done a lot of research. I was just looking the other day, commissioners, and there was a compilation of all the, the school shooters, and, and, and a large portion of those, when interviewed, said that, you know, that they chose schools because of the publicity that you get when you do something like that. And, and there was two individuals that chose churches first and then realized they'd get more publicity if they shot up a school. I think if we could publicize the amount of security we have, it, it's, it's a proven statistic that that is a major deterrent. Just like the Nashville shooter when, you know, in their manifesto, they detailed that, you know, that they 
originally chose the school and then they went on to a school that they had previously attended knowing that it was a private school with no security. So I think if we could beat the drum as loud as we, we do when someone, when a school gets shot up, you know, when we do something like this to secure the schools, we could get the word out that uh, if you come into Hampshire County and try to kill our kids, you're going you're gonna to die. <laughs> you're going to be met. Maybe I am a little over concerned because I have two little babies, but nevertheless, maybe redundant, but I don't mind being redundant on this topic. Okay, we are running slightly ahead of schedule now. Clerk, do we have any other maintenance items we can look at? We have the uh, exonerations from the assessor. Mr. President, I move we approve the exonerations as presented by the tax assessor. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that the exonerations uh, presented to the commission since our last meeting be approved as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. because the list was late. Mm. Those those were all recommended. Yes. Well, I guess the only thing Mr. Needed, Mr. Mills, yeah, yes. they need to ask on this one is whether they they said they didn't camp there, but that, were they still registered or not? Was that wrong? See, this was built for what, 2022? Yeah. They weren't, they weren't there. I mean, they didn't go. They're, they're, not, they're not coming back anyway. Right. Okay. So, as long as they weren't, as long as they weren't registered, 
there. Then. So because they didn't receive a bill, they don't have to pay it? The resident did not receive EMS billing. So, just, so that means they're exempt from paying it? What's the details of it? I keep forgetting. That's, that's Bob's, not yours. That's why I'm sorry. Put you on the spot. This one, Bob, is just for the late fees mm -hmm. to be. So for that one, they would, they're just at, at requesting that the late fees be exempted because it went, uh, okay. they didn't get it. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's why that's what it is. They did pay the bill, though. Yes. Just not, okay. Yeah. And we the actually sent the bill was paid. People. I move we uh, approve the EMS fee exemptions as presented second. Uh, director okay it's been moved and seconded that the uh, EMS exemption for fees presented at this meeting be approved all those in favor saying if I was saying aye. aye 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 motion passed do you have something else quick Eric or you want me to move on Things. Okay. Um, one being, I uh, sent you guys some information today that I talked about. We got a letter from the Attorney General's office regarding the uh, Regional Opioid Committee, and I haven't heard any more communication with that. Bob had gotten some information last night at the meeting. Apparently, the regional meeting is coming up in mid July, so you just want to get that on your attention, on your, on your minds. It'd be good for one of us, one of y'all to go, or whoever you designate. It's gonna be the 12th, 12th of July. I haven't gotten uh, anything. And, and basically, what they're doing is they want to select a representative for the for the region to represent us. Uh, basically, all the Berkman, Jefferson are all going to have representatives. We we want someone to represent us down there also, okay. so that we'll get our share of the funding, or at least have somebody working for us. What do you think about sending Matt and Mr. Hot? Well, we, we've talked we've talked to a, uh, a gentleman that has, has dealt with this before. Uh, with uh, he's with the he's with the guild, and I'll we'll talk about that later if you okay. if you want to. Okay, so we want to take a week to research us a little bit and find somebody is that is that what you is yeah. that the well, basically what, what you gentlemen would to like do, to do if, if one of us goes or all three of us goes basically what we're going to do is is go down there and have a conference and we're going to select someone to represent us with with the uh, the opioid distribution do you want a motion mr president to that effect uh, we no, probably don't I don't think we need a motion for that but I, we we just need to keep that on our radar so we, it is coming up here in a couple of weeks so we'll have to uh, make that effort for one or the three of us or two of us to get down there yeah I just found out about the date last night so it wasn't uh, it wasn't on the agenda or anything okay we will move on then to our uh, tabled item, uh, another tabled item from last meeting, and that was the bylaw revisions for Hampshire County Historic Landmarks. Mr. President, I move we remove that from the table and address it at this time. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that that item be uh, removed from the table and um, addressed in this meeting. And we have uh, two historic landmarks members here. Welcome, ladies. Thank you.
better than what we've had in the past. <laughs> and uh, Shippo uh, is setting up so that they can do this for all the historic landmarks commissions. And I think, guys, we, in the last meeting, we got a copy of the proposed uh, corrections that they made. And the one thing I think that David commented on was the chairperson and, the, the, and then the vice president. And I, I told David that when we set this thing up, we just set it up as a chairperson and we didn't, we didn't set up a vice president or uh, we just set a, a chairperson and a secretary of treasury. So what they have here is that in a meeting, if the chairperson is not there, then any of the other members can, can conduct a meeting if they have a quorum. And that I think, I think that's, that's I think the way that's it's, right. always, it's always been. It's that. always been that and, way, yes. Uh, and I think Commissioner Eggenger was concerned once about the minutes. Uh, Brian, did you? Did you? Uh, the, only, the only thing I wanted to note was that and again, we, we tabled the item because it was presented to us at the meeting and we didn't uh, see it prior to, so uh, everybody wanted a chance to read it over. The, the only thing I saw was uh, normally our boards, you know, uh, state that they'll approve the minutes at their next uh, official meeting and then present those official minutes from there uh, rather than just a general term of um, well, how quickly after they've been approved would you like to have them? The law says 24 hours. 24 so hours approved. after they've been approved? Make it real. It's okay. Hours after. Because we've always gone with what the state sent us in 2007. I mean, I'm glad you guys found that and picked it up because we needed to know that. Okay. So, then the only other small comment I had was um, for, a, and, and I'm fine with the uh, the chairperson type setup, Bob. Do they do they elect or appoint that? Should should they, they should be they, able? They elect it themselves. The district's land commission, landmarks commission, uh, elects the the chairperson. And, and I, that's just a comment. I think Commissioner Cannon had the same comment: is that they should be elected. Well, I think the chair is elected, and then the chair will appoint their exactly. secretary and treasurer. I was, I was just maybe bringing it up for discussion. Perhaps they all be elected. Like, I mean, that's just most of the boards that I was on. But we've I really elected. am not. In, I'm not indifferent. I'm, I mean, I'm completely indifferent. No, I don't. I don't really care. We've always elected. We've always elected everybody. You know. What says here, it shall also appoint a secretary and treasurer. Yeah, but we've always. So, so we do. What's yeah. the decision, commissioners? leave it to where the chair appoints their secretary and treasurer or they shall be elected being this is commissioner's hot commissioner Hawk's board Which one I, have I got? defer to his decision I thought it was elected <clears throat> section one article a wait a minute I got the wrong one I got the wrong one there you go right Okay, it shall appoint. Okay, so the, if the commission is appointing, then we just need to say that our commission will elect those officers. Yeah, your your commission shall you know shall elect. Yeah. And I think it should be the same way with the secretary and treasurer. You do that. Yeah. And they can be that can be one person. It you don't want to be two persons. Yeah. yeah. Hours. Yeah, but that gives you from After your last meeting all the way to the next meeting to to, to write them and, and present them to the board members. After the meeting in which they were approved, though, so yeah. they have to be approved. Yeah. 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 Right. You want them yeah, just like our meetings here, we approve. We approved last or two weeks ago. We just approved them tonight. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And okay. Within 24 hours, you're yeah. Okay. And then the only other thing, guys, in the um, in our order that we we done in 2007, we have in here the uh, 
on file for public record in the planning office, and we, we want to change that to follow with, I mean, it can be filed with your office. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Well, they're, they're trying to get the planning office out of it altogether anyway, so I can't see them putting... Well, to the designated yeah, yeah. space, yeah. I don't know where... Again, at this point... A designated space. We have space. some bill space in the... In the uh, yeah. A designated space within the court... Within the the locker downstairs, the, you know, we have a good secure area. So, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. Did, did you ladies happen to read Chapter 8? of the code 8-26 on historic landmarks if if not take a look at that just if just 8-26 26a yeah 26a thank you commissioner 26 the only thing that i would and this is this is not affecting anything we're talking about but i just would like to read it just quickly uh, on on 826m at the end it says uh adopt such other rules and regulations as may be deemed necessary to effectuate the purposes of this article but no such rules and regulations shall be inconsistent with any plan of the planning commission or the county provided in no case shall any of your rules or regulations take precedence over locally adopted right. ordinances yeah. that was the only thing i found relating to the planning commission i was just thinking there must have been a reason they were connected to begin with but i think everything we're doing is fine you, well, we don't want you going against the comprehensive plan or what commission I, I guess is doing. that's just the way they set it up in 2007 when they started it because it sense. yes it yes kind of information. yes okay any other uh, comments commissioners or uh, further corrections no, ladies any other questions for us our next order of business is to get those bids in and have a public meeting where people can start telling us where cemeteries are located so that those consultants can be up and running in September. That's what we're hoping for. You got your work cut out for you there. In putting down um, a new bylaws to be able to say where our, our documents will be housed and I say um, just in the, the courthouse. courthouse or shall I say why don't you say in the courthouse courthouse will be fine yeah okay yeah because yeah, we haven't really designated anything down I think we have a couple of spaces maybe in, in the basement that, that may be available so I think, okay, we went down, the courthouse would be fine. We went we down with get... Eric and, and went through and saw the different rooms and things, and there is some space down there that we can make work. We'll make it work. Okay, thanks. All right? Yes, so, gentlemen, could I have a motion to uh, approve this uh, document so their board can be official by I'll July move. 1, as they requested? Yeah. I'll move that we approve the, uh, the yeah. proposed bylaws and, and the... Uh, the commission order Our, as uh, as we corrected here this evening second okay it's been moved and seconded that the uh, uh, landmarks committee bylaws uh, be approved as discussed and presented here this evening all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. motion passed I sent you that code Mrs. Shaw you're welcome yes all right, thank you. Thank you, thank guys. Thank you very much. Bob's got them memorized. I got to look them up. <laughs> I don't have them memorized. I just, I just I, I read it once in a while. Well, I've read it. I don't like to read it today. Eric, you got anything else? You like? We get the budget, uh, yeah. Not till the, the not till the stuff at the end. Okay. Um, we're just a little bit ahead of schedule. I'll take this time to uh, read some of the uh, Hampshire County broadband uh, accomplishments uh, summary that uh, Aaron sent us here, all the commissioners not too long ago. Um, and again, this is, this is all the projects that the county has uh, 
worked to get grants, worked with HardyNet uh, to get better internet in the county. Um, so the homes pass that can get services um, as of this report, 557 um, home subs residentials just subscribing out of those 140, which is about 25% take rate. That was up 2% from the previous month. Um, network fees collected and remitted $792, which the, uh, the county gets a small fee collected for the upkeep and maintenance help um, to do these projects. Breakdown of the different project areas. Cape and Bridge has a take rate of hardy net for about 32 percent um, with 179 homes passed and 57 uh, subscribed. Grassy Lick has about a 36 percent take rate, 135 homes passed, uh, 48 subscribed. Um, Community Connect, so far, the take rate is about 15 percent, 248 homes passed, um, 46 subscribed. Uh, Hardy Net now is completing splicing for River Ridge, Yellow Springs, Wilson, and Christian Church areas. Uh, remaining areas ready for splicing and targeted dates for opening to customers are as follows. Uh, Wolford Beach Lane 616 in the process, 75 to 80% complete. Janesway area 628. Falls Road area, July 10th, construction completion estimated at 98%. Uh, last part of HG Brill Road is in process, and that leaves small pieces of Milk Road and Falls Road to be completed. Um, the splicing now estimated at 75%. Hardy continues to have a heavy focus on splicing this uh, project for this project at this point. Uh, the 5029 split out to Slainsville. Hardy is ready to finalize engineering and release it for construction. The 5029 split to Cooper Mountain uh, sent out 65 total right of ways required and have received 61 back. Um, And that pretty much summarizes what uh, Aaron's reported on our broadband efforts. Some of, the, some of that has a lot of technical language in it, and I'm just not going to read it because it really doesn't. I tried to hit the main points of where they're going and where they're trying to go and what they're trying to do. Thank you. All right, we will now move on to the REAP grant, the REAP grant application. We have Mr. Ronkin here for that, and Dorothy. Dorothy is coming up as well. Commissioners, the Hampshire County Recycling Committee members are before you tonight to seek approval for three specific goals the committee has for the future recycling in the county. 
All the goals tonight are related to past, current, and future REAP grants secured by the county. Goal one, approve and signatures tonight for submittal of the 2024 REAP grant application, which is included in your packet. We will detail what the committee envisions with this grant shortly. Goal number two, approval of an unpaid county recycling coordinator to manage the administrative aspects of the county recycling program. This, pro this position will not be in lieu of the county recycling committee, but will be the singular point of contact for all recycling administrative functions to include REAP grant progression reports, progression reports, and the administrative functions of the county recycling center. And goal three is the approval to for the county to hire a part-time paid employee whose primary function is to move Hampshire County recycling bins to the local recycling centers. So with no further ado, I would like to go through the highlights of the REAP grant that is before you. If I could direct you to page two alpha, And there you will actually see where we have been and where we are at currently with the amount of recycling in this county. About midway down, you can see under 2021, we have removed from the waste stream approximately 104 tons of recyclable materials. In 2022, 131. And in just the first quarter of 2023, we did 42 estimated through four quarters for 168. What does that get us? That gets us basically a 28% increase from 2022 to 2023 and from 2021 to 2022, it was a 25% increase. Moving on, if you go to the next page to Bravo, you will see what the current uh, vehicles and equipment that the recycling uh, in this county uh, owns and includes a GMC one-ton truck with gooseneck trailer towing capabilities that came from the 2022 REAP grant, 2022 uh, Protainer 20-foot roll-on off gooseneck trailer, again that came from the 2022 REAP grant. Uh, obviously the four recycling bins that we got on the original REAP grant, uh, the wood building at the center and a security camera system. Moving quickly on to uh, page four, and this is kind of the start of the meat of this grant. On the top, under number one, a project description. This project's primary goal is to expand Hampshire County's recycling program beyond our Hampshire County Recycling Center and addresses needed critical safety improvements while fixing logistical issues being incurred with equipment purchased under the 2022 REAP grant awarded to the county and for the current facility. Um, under two, if you wanna look, uh, when I'm not parting water, I'm actually walking on it, but we'll talk about that later. If you go to uh, page five, this is what we're looking for from the state of West Virginia this year four additional recycling bins that are a little bit smaller than our current ones, uh, 20 feet by eight feet by seven feet. We're looking to asphalt the, uh, the county center. Uh, it's, uh, the county center is at 90 feet by 140 feet. And what we're looking for is asphalt paving that's at 85 feet by 140 feet by three inches. We're asking for four concrete pads being approximately 12 feet by 24 feet by four inches reinforced. We're asking for a glass crusher to uh, increase the amount of recyclables we can take. Uh, we are picking the smallest glass crusher that's available that meets specs. Uh, we wanna replace the double, we wanna replace the gate that's out there. It's a roll, rolling gate uh, and it's a struggle to move even on the nicest days. Also included in this grant request is miscellaneous costs for putting a, the crusher electrical in and an overhead cover and labor costs for basically one employee for the eight hours that the recycling center is for the next 12 hours. 
What does that get you? It gets $149,620 that we are going to ask for from the state. If I can move you now on to page seven. This is the executive summary. This is where we make the argument that they need to give us the money, the state of West Virginia. Halfway down under the summary statement, states the program strives to maximize recycling in the county by using a conservative, fiscally responsible methodology to realistically expand the program beyond the current Hampshire County Recycling Center. The proposed project accomplishes this and provides needed fixes to critical safety and logistical issues now being encountered at the HCRC, which is the recycling center in Augusta. Underneath that is the objectives. The objectives is to add four additional bins. Why do we need the four additional bins? Because we're going to use those bins in lieu of what we have in the current uh, county center and we're gonna probably move those two bins that have the slots, not the big doors, to a lo one location would be uh, Cape and Bridge, and another location would be in Springfield. This is future, this is not necessarily tomorrow. Uh, we are adding the glass crusher, like I said earlier, it's to use or to add another recyclable. It's sustainable and it's fiscally conservative. And what I mean by that is we could have gone for the $69,000 and the $98,000, we're taking basically the smallest one that we can use that will effectively take our glass and crush it. The interesting thing about the glass is that it is being used throughout the immediate areas uh, successfully on uh, trails, using it for uh, horseshoe pits, it's being sold. Um, it is, there's more uh, demand than there is availability for this. So we don't see an issue in the future as far as getting rid of every bit of glass that we get. Uh, the site improvements. This is really critical for what we want to do. We need to pave that facility. Under number three, uh, we're talking about the concrete pads and asphalt. Uh, there are significant concerns dealing with the safety of our county employees and volunteers while working there. I have been out there when we have had up to seven or eight vehicles come in at the same time. What does that get you in a gravel parking lot? Just under chaos, because everybody drives where they think they need to go. If we have that asphalt and we have it marked on the ground, we are a lot better off as far as the safety of our employees the county employees and the volunteers working there. The country pads, we can do it probably with asphalt if they take away our $25,000 for the concrete, the state, if they don't award it. But on a hot day, rolling a seven to eight ton recycling bin on asphalt probably isn't gonna get us longevity in the asphalt. So that's why we're asking for the concrete pads to basically set the pad or set the new concrete or set the new recycling bins on. Um, then the additional um, uh, improvements are basically for putting the glass crusher on site. Down at the bottom, the second to last statement uh, or paragraph, the influence of the county and its residents on a successful implementation of this project cannot be overstated. The most recent polling, 621-2023, of residents by the Hampshire Review, thank you very much for that timely uh, check, 45.5% uh, of the respondents recycle, another 18.2% sometimes recycle. Giving residents increased locations to bring recycled materials would allow the county to divert significant additional tons from the waste stream. And the last paragraph is probably the most important from my perspective. Safety should never be compromised. It is not uncommon to have those five or six vehicles like I was talking about earlier. With no ability to mark the current road surface, residents generally make poor decisions when entering parking, leaving the 145 by 90 foot facility, which also contains four large recycling bins, a shed, multiple recycling cans. Having the asphalt surface will clear, with clear markings 
on pavement would solve the safety issue with county employees and volunteers working at that facility. There's obviously a lot more to this. Uh, I can tell you that by the amount of time I spent writing it, uh, but I would like to have you move on to just page six, if you, or I'm sorry, page nine. Community involvement, uh, as noted in the summary statement, most county residents that use the Hampshire County Recycling Center are driving no more than seven miles one way to the facility. That it captures Romney, but it does not capture Cape and Braid, Springfield, or most of northern, uh, nor northern uh, Hampshire. Uh, by putting basically two more bins out, one at, in Springfield and one in Cape and Bridge, we get the majority of the county employee or the county residents within that seven mile radius that it appears people are willing to drive to recycle. Down in the second paragraph, I put this again in here because I wanted to emphasize it to the state. By using a fiscally conservative approach to the expansion through the use of bins already owned and currently used by the recycling center, the new bins obviously will go to the new center while the old ones will be moved to the, for the expansion. And using existing county land, we're not going to build two more county recycling centers. We're going to use center, or we're going to use basically land or businesses interested in having a recycling bin, maybe behind their facility or maybe in their parking lot. That's what we're going for. Uh, allows for the majority of county residents to have access. Moving on to page 18. This is where I tried to tell them that you guys walk on water when you aren't courting it. Uh, the first paragraph, the Hampshire County Commission has been fully supportive of the work of the Hampshire County Recycling Committee and the Hampshire Recycling Cooperative, which is a key member of this, uh, this success since the inception of the Recycling Committee. Everyone involved will always want to do more recycling. However, for the county's program to remain successful in the ever-evolving world of recycling, the committee must remain steadfast in the two underlying principles guiding the committee. Anything Hampshire County does must be sustainable and it must be fiscally responsible. Down at the fourth paragraph I have, at the completion of this project, recycling will be easily available to most Hampshire County re residents through the strategic placement of recycle bins in other population centers of the county other than Augusta. All right. Um, and then at the last paragraph, it's noted on page 20, Hampshire County does not have currently or before a recycling coordinator, director, or manager. When I bring you to the next page, I'm going to show you what I feel is the real need to have this unpaid recycling coordinator. And if you could now go to page 21. The, the state requires us to do a timeline graph. This is the timeline graph for next year, assuming that we get $149,620, which means that somebody is going to stay busy for the year. What I'm asking is you allow us to, or appoint a recycling coordinator that does the administrative work on this to make sure that all these benchmarks are made. And with that, I'm done, and I blew my five minutes. I will say you you hit the highlights pretty good there, sir. But yeah, that was a good job. for a real, real good. That's for real a document good. that lengthy. Uh, when you're talking about these extra bins being put, like at Springfield and where Cambridge, yeah. are those going to be new bins, or the, some of the ones we have out here now? The ones we already have. Okay. And we're only going to use two of them. We're going to use the ones with the slots. Would that be, could we, could we do that as a sort of a probationary period to start? Absolutely. And the reason I'm saying that is if, if you've noticed a lot of other places where they have bins sitting in different, people throw trash and everything else in them. So that, that would be my only concern. And, and Commissioner Hot, boy, does that, that completely is the truth. And that's why I, I've, I mentioned it a couple of times, but what I didn't mention is 
our bins are lockable. So conceivably, if we had a business or we had, we're looking at the parking lot in Cape and Bridge, uh, the, the fire department behind it, they have a large uh, parking lot. If we put a bin back there, conceivably, we could lock it every night somebody could lock it every night the the, the the bins that that have the slots we could put cameras back there too probably yes we are at the beginning of the process of finding a location and somewhere in this document and i can't tell you where because i am numbstruck on this document anymore from re or writing it i have that if we don't make meet expectations for the for recycling, either because they're putting all kinds of stuff in it or we're just not getting them out, we can move them. We own those bins. They are no longer owned or, well, have a uh, lien on it from the, the, the county. Or from the, or from the state, I'm sorry. Uh, the biggest thing we have is we, we need to start doing our own movement of transport of the bins. Who's been, who, who's been doing that? Nobody. What we're trying to do, and that's the third goal, is trying to get a part-time employee that will be, his primary job, maybe only eight hours a, a week, maybe even less than that, would be to move the bins, use the one-ton truck that we have and that protein or trailer, and bring it instead of spending $175 for Apple Valley Waste to do that. So, so we're looking at for someone just twice a week, maybe. Yeah. What about have have we thought about incorporating that with the main staffing employee? I mean, I know, I know Kenny has has thought of, or has mentioned that he could use more employees. Would that be would that be something we could look at? That's a possible idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it, because it's it, it's going to be well. This is just my man. I think it's going to be difficult to find somebody to work yes. one or two days a week. And I think if if we could incorporate that into the, one of the maintenance staff helping with with the, with the maintenance plus doing that, I think it, I think that might be something we can do. We don't have to decide that part of it anyway tonight. Correct. Okay. But what we couldn't have is you guys telling maintenance what to do. No, we can't. Uh, no, that, that there, there's, there's no intent on that. I know. I'm just there's being a little blunt. I didn't hear what you said. I said what we, what we can't have is them telling maintenance what to do. Oh, yeah. Maintenance right. having 20 different right. chiefs. I understand, you know. yes. You're, you're correct. I can tell Jack, but I'll only tell him once, <laughs> and then he'll tell me <laughs> the location where I should go. <laughs> Well, you know, this I I really like this. This is this is probably the best. You done another application, didn't you? What's that? You you you, you done our last application? Worked. I worked on it. Yeah. Well, this. But got the I did this one. Yeah. This is. Yeah. This is. This is this is really good. It's really good. And I'm, and, well, and, I, and and I and we're we're probably one of the few counties that can go back and get this apply again because we just got it. What? Was it last year we got one? Two you know, years ago. We got it. We can only get them once. Every other year, year yeah. And, and the state, just to blow your own horn for the three of you and really Eric too, the state continues to tell me that they would like to send people to us to show them how a conservative county can actually still do re recycling. And I mean, we. Obviously, everybody wants to do more, but this, you have to, this you have is set up to not cost you any more money. Well, and you have to use common sense about it. You know, yeah. a lot of people want to just do all the plastic, and, and, and we knew in the beginning that we couldn't. But you should see the amount of plastic that Dorothy's cooperative is, the, the, the Hampshire cooperative is getting now that they know that we're collecting it. The film plastic. Not the, plastic the film models. plastic. Yeah. 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 Grocery bags. Yeah. Grocery bags and other film plastic. It, so far, we. You still take them to trucks? We take yeah. it to Food Lion, who then takes it to trucks. Okay. We but we it, get credit. We weigh Good. it. We keep track. We report it to trucks every month how much. So every six months, 
so far we've won two benches because we have over 500 pounds each month, each six month period. And I'm on track to get another one in another month. Mr. President, I'm, if, uh, if I may, I'm ready to move to, to authorize uh, the uh, recycling committee to, to apply for this uh, grant application and also to approve all three of their goals. You, well, first I'll second the motion, but with a with one more question and discussion after I second. Uh, your goal number two, and I may have missed this because I was reading while you're talking there for a second, but your goal number two, uh, the approval of an unpaid coordinator. Clearly, you have someone in mind. Yeah, me, because <laughs> no one's going to take this. That's exactly. That's what who I, was I had in mind too. Well, we're we're approving it, but and me assisting him. <laughs> Yeah, and, up for free, and, and I really, I have not said it here, and I apologize for not saying it before this. You cannot underestimate the amount of help that I've received from Dorothy, from Susan, from Jeff Slack. And this is not an individual's document. This is, this is the county getting together and making it work. And... Um, I'm just ornery enough. I'm never going to let anything fail if you've given it to me. And since Dave knocked on my door, it seems like, and Brian grabbed me, we're not going to let this fail. And I talked to Jeff Slack, who called Reap yesterday and told him that this was on their way, assuming you would sign it. And his, his take to me when I sat down with him was, you're going to get most of it. You may not get all of it, but you're going to get most of it. So we'll on, the, on the signatures, what signatures you need in here besides the... the uh, uh, Brian needs it's to sign. Uh, there Got should it. be two places. One for the document itself, and at the end, it's a... It's some a statement, statement that page. you have to... Uh, it's the last... I think you have a sticky there that says sign. So we have a motion on the floor to uh, approve the the RE the REAP grant presented to us along with the goals uh, of the recycling committee and we have a motion and a second so uh, we'll go ahead and vote on that all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. motion passed blue ink, blue ink. Blue ink. And I thank you, Mr. Ronkin and Ms. Kengla, for all your work on this. Yes. We appreciate that. I'm accepting it. I will test significant amount of work. I think you also set a record for the amount of times fiscally responsible was. You like that? <laughs> I like conservative. <laughs> I would point out that we have gotten 120000 for our first grant to the excavation and the establishment of the facility and the business. Your chickens. Yeah, no. Right. This one here. I got Jeff to sign. Okay, but how about up here? Board. It only needs one, one or the other. Okay, because I was going to sign. Yeah, that. I know so, you could. There was only two spots there. Ralph, is that correct? Uh, that one and. Yep, that's it. And if I can get those, those are your. No. Thank you, Dorothy. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, next we have Eileen Johnson and the CDBG project. Thank you. 
for coming. My pleasure for having us. Um, I'm here this evening regarding the CDB projects at the request of Region 8 Planning and Development Council, um, the, them being the program administrator for the CDBG projects. They could not be here, and um, with the projects re-engaged, we need to get some documents executed so that we, they can process that for the funding reimbursement. And there are three transactions and documents that need to be some, sig either signed or signatures added. I want to thank Commissioner Ecklinger for making himself available in the past month because in order to get the um, budget amendment passed, we needed to have some quick response. And so I appreciate you making yourself available and coming in to get the some of these documents signed. Um, the first transaction was to approve pay rec number one for the CDBG project, which um, is for the former Hampshire Memorial Hospital demolition and the uh, final brownfield remediation. That pay rec represents um, a total disbursement of $80,725.49. The second transaction was, in fact, the request to execute a budget amendment to add additional grant funding from the CDBG program to the project in order to cover the cost to abate the, the recently discovered additional contaminants. That added $423,000 and $582 to the project. That was funding, obviously, that the authority could not invest in. We didn't have the local funding, nor did we um, expect the county to be able to give that to us. We were successful in requesting CDBG, given the urgency of this project, to approve a budget amendment from surplus funds that they had within their program that was approved, but we needed to execute the documents in order to have that funding released to the project. Um, so that was the second document that I'll ask you to sign. And then the final thing was as, as a result of getting the budget amendment approved, that allowed the first change order to bring the contractor back on site as uh, Commissioner Cannon mentioned, they were remobilized on this Monday, on the 26th, to start the abatement of the, the final abatement of this project, as well as while they are abating it, they're simultaneously going to be abating an area and then starting on demolition um, and once that is finished um, in order to go to the next area. This cost, the reason this um, change order and budget amendment was so high is was given the time, given the delays that have resulted through this project, it was very important to get the project back on track and get it completed as soon as possible. So the cost of the project added another 45 or around 45 days to the project versus 75 days. And that was only made possible because the CDBG allowed this budget amendment of grant funds to come into the project. Uh, those are really the three transactions and the, the process that we need to address tonight. But do you have any questions on any one of those things? Pay rec number one, or the budget amendment request, or this change order that provided a work directive to get the contractor back on site as quickly as possible to commence work? Is there anything that questions that you have that I can address on that? No. Questions, gentlemen? I don't have any. No. Pretty, it's pretty cut and dry. Um, with that said, if you would be in agreement to, um, if I could step up there and get your signature, I have to hand deliver these documents to Region 8 tomorrow. And the reason being is because, like for pay rec, we want to make sure that the vendors are paid timely. And because of the grant process, Region 8 has to, to um, sign off on these, then they go to the CDBG, and then that funding will be sent to the county commission for the disbursement of those funds to the vendors by invoice. Yes, absolutely.
Gentlemen, do you want to see anything before you move for uh, approval of my signature on these documents? Do you need to see any of the, the documents? No, I don't need to. I'm, I'm pretty familiar. Okay. I, I'd move that we authorize the president to sign the document as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded uh, for the president of the commission to uh, sign the CBDG uh, documents presented from the development authority at this meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. and this is the change order which provided the work directive to get the contractor back on site and then the amendment for the additional services and fees that will go to the engineer on the project. Eileen, I think we need to call the sheriff about the uh, cruisers down there. Or, or I can. That'd be fine. We can okay. do that. Um, and we did provide notice to everyone On behalf of um, the Hampshire County Development Authority, I have uh, provided you a spreadsheet that was requested by Commissioner Hott about the expenses that the Development Authority has uh, incurred due to the, um, the old hospital and of course now it's demolition. And I'm going to give you a second to look this over, but um, some of the things that we wanted to discuss with you. One is when the hospital was, um, uh, when it was requested that we take the hospital, um, control of the hospital, it was supposed to be a net zero expense to the development authority. And as you can see, that didn't exactly happen um, with, with uh, the expenses of getting it torn down. My understanding is also at that time, uh, in order to, uh, um, renovate the hospital for use at that time, it would have been $4 million uh, cost to the county commission, which of course uh, the money wasn't there to, uh, to make those changes. As you look down on through the spreadsheet, you can see that we've expended $259,917.09 out of the monies for the development authority uh, for items that we needed to have done. As you can see listed there that were not able to be uh, recuperated through grant money or other type things. One, noticeably, the second line there, we have to um, inquire a loan of $190,560, which is going to be, uh, have to start paying back on in December of 2024. And we estimate those payments to be somewhere around $2,000 per month. Obviously, we're going to have to sell some property in order to make that, uh, make those payments. 
at that time. Very low interest rate, but still all the same, it's, it's come and due and, um, for that. The total cost of the hospital abatement, minus any, any other surprises um, that we're not uh, hoping and uh, praying that we're not gonna have anything additional, as you can see, is the 1.183 million below. Do you all have any questions for me? Uh, on the, the lost rental income, the 36, when we, did, when we sold those units, what did we, and I forget when we sold, I forget when we sold them, what did we get out of them, do you recall? Okay, yeah, we sold those in October of 2020 because okay. as we were getting ready to procure the funding, the two-phase funding for, um, for the project itself, um, we had to remove those trailers. Mm -hmm. um, what the board decided to do was to offer those with sealed bids, okay. primarily focused on nonprofits, obviously, because what it, that would have saved the project, the cost of demolition of those two structures. Um, we did that in October 20, but we in that $36,000 loss in revenue, we were annualizing about $9,600 from the two units they produced $400 a piece. Mm. But, but from October of 20 until now, that's the loss of revenue mm. um, that we've incurred. So that it indirectly is an expense to the project. Mm. Do you remember what we got out of those buildings? We got $100 out of both units is okay. what we got. But we saved on the cost okay. of having to demolish okay. the structures. I remember we sold them. I couldn't remember yes. what we got. And then, just guys, just for your your info, I, of course, Becky said it was supposed to be zero. I think, I think the word was we didn't want it to be a burden <laughs> to, the, to the development authority, and that's that's what. And, and Brian, I think you had you'd maybe been on a couple of years, but that by that time, but over the years prior to that, and I got a I got a uh, letter here from Sealing back in, in in 2013, and we had tried to get rid of the hospital we'd had different people come in and they wanted to do drug rehab and do this and that and the Potomac Center and the, and the guild wanted the hospital they wanted to take and, and each have half so we had ceiling go out and give us an estimate and that's that's where the four million dollars came from and matter of fact that don't even include the roof you know this, the roof wasn't even included in this it was it was four million thirty seven thousand two hundred sixteen dollars is what is what they the estimate that it, they gave us for the and that was in, in, in 2013. And of course, the, the county commission didn't have any, we didn't have any money like that. We, we, just, we just didn't. So therefore, that's why, and, and we had a problem. Every time we had an election, somebody would come in and want the hospital. Well, and of course, it, it didn't work. And we, we knew that we, we weren't very good at, at marketing the hospital. So that's why we asked the development authority through the building commission to, to go ahead and take it in which they did, and, and, and we said that we didn't want it to be a burden. But they go on it had, it's turned out to be a burden to them, and uh, to, to no fault of their own. And just, just like this asbestos debatement, we went through that thing. We, we've done that year, for two or three different times, and we were assured everything was fine, but anyway, that's, that's water under the bridge. But that, that's one of the reasons we had the development authority to do that. And then when Eileen started with, with the Brownstone uh, project, that was very cumbersome and, and took a lot of time and a lot of effort. And it, it, it finally came through and we, we were able to do it now. So I guess one of the things that I'm, uh, I'm in favor of, I, I'm not sure about this time about the, the, the 259. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking a little bit about maybe 250 for the revolving loan, uh, and, and the reason I'm, th I'm thinking that way is the the 190 don't have to be. We don't have to start paying on that until next December. That's correct. So I, I'm th I'm thinking more about the, the 250 of the revolving uh, loan repayment, but that's that's just me, guys. You guys can. May I say something? Um, <laughs> Having that, what, I said, um, what we said no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Having that 
$250,000 restored. And of course, it would be the board's decision as to, unless you mandate that that be restored to the infrastructure revolving loan program, um, what that would do would we, it would put some restrictions as to how that money could be used to continue to support future infrastructure projects within the county and yet be sustainable because that money would then be loaned to those projects um, with a, a fair interest rate returning, making that fund sustainable. What it does for the development authority is that it it instantly allows us to gain more liquidity and solvency in our financial reports. Um, you see what we've done through from 2018, we've been very, very careful. Our board has been very, very intentional and, and strategic in um, being able to put the money into the field, into the projects to improve the infrastructure projects, not just for this, for other ones within the county, but being able to maintain the liquidity and solvency of the development authority. That was critical because that then would have an impact if we dropped below where we needed to be on our borrowing power. So working with our accounting firm and with the board that's fully engaged and very aware of all of this, we've been able to do that. But we're at a point now where we're really at that te teetering point. So if it's so your decision to allow that fund to be replenished, that will, um, it will do a couple different things. It will allow the infrastructure projects in the future to be able to be facilitated through that program. But in addition to that, it would help the, the development authority regain some solvency um, uh, while we're waiting to get the, um, the property swapped with the with Board of Education, because that's at least until 2024, 2025, before we'll see a return on that investment. I understand that this commission, especially this commission, it really likes to put a lot of thought into each dollar. Uh, and you know us correlating our, our vision for the county with the development authorities vision is, is is important it's it's awesome to see us starting to work a little closer together my first year wasn't so good um but if there was ever any uh, uh time to to do something like this i think for this specific fund it, it it, as Eileen said, it's you know it's sort of locked down with, with very specific parameters, and, and I, I think we can all agree that for infrastructure, you know, we don't want to just be writing blank checks for for any wild idea. Um, but I, I couldn't agree more with you, Commissioner Hot, and and just me as one commissioner coming in to, to basically your board, where you appointed everybody, and and you know I've. I've, I've came in reappointed a lot because I think you made some good decisions and and I've and I've added a couple um, but you've seen what we can do with nothing <laughs> well now, now know, give us a little bit of money and see what we can do the other thing and I, I think I said this some meeting ago that ever since I've been involved with the development authority and and there's times that I haven't really helped but ever <laughs> since that I've been involved they, they've always had to be fighting from the bottom. And they're always, they've always had to be fighting decisions that, that were made, not, not by them, that were made by other people. And, it's, and, and I'll talk about the wellness center. When we started that, it was, it, that was a mess. And with the development authority, they had to fight their way through that. And, it, it, and, and the current members, it wasn't, even their, it wasn't their doing at all. And the same way with a lot of this stuff, is it's things that they, that they never started. It wasn't a project. That, it's, it's projects that they've been trying to fix for the last 15, 16 years. So. I don't mean to take any credit from you or Commissioner Argenger because in the last, you know, we, we've, we've, I tabulated the other day, you know, with the, the roof and the grant matches, the Eileen's consulting, you know, help, help. We've done some unorthodox things and you guys have definitely been very supportive. I, I'm just kind of being a little bit facetious. I'm not saying you've cut our legs out, but I, I think if there was ever a way to put some strings uh, attached to the money and, and control the direction of money, this there wouldn't really be a better way than this. And, and from what I understand, that money was always meant to be given back. You know, it's supposed to be revolving. That's the whole point of it. And uh, and, and and 
and, and I'm, being, I'm being truthful. I, I completely forgot about ever saying that until Rebecca reminded me. And I still don't remember saying that, but I was so damn pleased that we was going to get Cape and Bridge and, and the Development Authority working together to finally get that system out from under the Development Authority that, that I, I'm, I'm sure I said it. I mean, I, but, I, but I was pleased that that happened, that we, we were able, and then I'm, I'm more pleased now that the way we've gone with, with, with the town taking over the whole thing. And to me, that's where we should have been years ago, but it didn't work, it just, it just didn't work. Well, gentlemen, I see this as an opportunity for us moving forward to continue to partnership with each other with these infrastructure projects. Um, this will give uh, an outlet for that money, for the, for the need, and that it can come before the uh, development authority, alleviate some pressure off of this board or the commissioner's offices or the commissioners excuse me and um and, and work truly work together to make hampshire county better and take care of the needs that we need because infrastructure is very much needed for any uh, economic growth here in the county and i see this as an opportunity uh to continue to work together and continue to see the county go in the right direction i think we have we are um really moving forward, especially in the last uh, 12 to 18 months, and I would like to see that to continue. Ms. So, Commissioner Hopp, did you have a proposal in which you'd like to relinquish those funds from? That was, that was what I was gonna say, Commissioner Cannon, is, is uh, what's, the, what's the timeline and the amount and the uh, uh, fund that we're gonna pull from on this? And, and obviously, you know, uh, as a revolving, if, if it's going to be that labeled that, we have to be, there is that, you, we have to be careful where we pull that from because it's, we've been told no on that previously. You know, it has to, it's got to come from the general. Well, this, this is my thought. We are probably going to eventually have to take our, uh, one of our CDs to do some, some broadband work. And I think that particular CD at this time al allows us to make one, one withdrawal w without a, a penalty. But that's, that's where I would recommend that we take it from. Uh, and and we've, had those, we've had those CDs for, for, for some time. And we, we still have one. I mean, we got two but if we take this one. And I don't necessarily like to have money laying and, 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 not, and not working for us. Also, don't want to take, take all, all, the, all the funding we have and, and, and you know, get in trouble. But I don't think we'll, we'll do that. But that's, that's, that, would be my, that would be my recommendation. And, um, and, and that's... Basically, what I was thinking too, uh, Commissioner Hart, what about timeline for this? Does this need to be replenished immediately, or is this? Well, I think in order for them to function, it's going to have to be within. Do you guys have a have any any timeline at all? Well, Eileen retires on Friday, and we'd like to see it done by then. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go out with a bang, please. Oh, we'll we'll give her some credit. Obviously, gentlemen, we would like to have um, it taken care of sooner than later, for sure. But we don't have a pending project um, at, the, at immediately. But that doesn't mean that something will not come up. And I, I tend to uh, to keep moving forward, like I said. So um, we're constantly looking into how to help the county, just like you all are. Being if it if there wasn't so many strings attached, but being that there is and it has to be allocated for a specific type of project, it's not like you can use it for operational expenses and to make no. you solvent. So if it if it, if it was this situation, would be different. But I mean, and then I'm just spitballing with the commission here. You know, why don't we move that uh, this money be uh, allocated? as an infrastructure project is, is presented. 
Commissioner, mm -hmm. Commissioner Cannon, um, with all due respect, then we just have to come back and re rehash this whole situation again. Um, and I mean no disrespect in that whatsoever, but if we have it as a line item, it only makes us stronger with um, any kind of projects that we're moving forward with. Although we can't spend it, but it gives us the, the availability of those funds should a project arise. And as Eileen, or um, uh, Executive Director Johnson said earlier, it also helps with uh, the um, financial, how did you put it, the financial? Fin solvency, financy. and it helps us when we need to, to be able to have more borrowing capacity. We're right now, we are right on the, we're good, Is but we are right on that boundary. So would this go into revolving loan this, fund? It might, account? I mean the board would, based on what direction you give and what the board agrees, and I'm sure that they would support that this money, that you give us this $250,000, and we do we, we do want to have it as quickly as possible in a lump sum, it would replenish the exhausted infrastructure revolving fund. That money would go into there, and it would be available for any utility, any infrastructure project that needs upfront seed money for designs or scopes while they're um, working to procure their funding for their project. And it would be given as a loan. I don't think we, that the authority moving forward would even consider giving it as a grant. But you raise a good point. If the commission hadn't given that $100,000 and the development authority hadn't given and re, or depleted that fund, the sewer project that was just recently completed in Cape and Bridge wouldn't have happened. They didn't have the resources to do that. So what Rebecca is saying is this collaboration and um, of these multi jurisdictions when we work together for the same purpose and we're all looking toward the same goal great things can happen and thing and progress can be made it's not quick but it can be made so yes we would want that given we would potentially put that as based on what parameters you set and our board I'm sure would accept but it would replenish that fund knowing that as you know ARPA money and all this money transfers that came from COVID is diminished. It gives an opportunity when people come to the to the county commission to ask for money to start to do a feasibility study or design a project scope. You can redirect them to the development authority, and based on the availability of funds in that account, we can help those projects um, get started. Well, and I think, guys, we could really just take it out of the general fund, and then and then when we do the CD, just replenish it. We do that. We're running tight. Huh? We're running pretty tight. You're not going to have any tax revenues. You, you, until you get in, the, in the general fund? You're not, you're not going to have much tax revenue coming in. You're spent down pretty good right now. There's not been much inflow. Uh, so that'll start coming back in August, September. You know, that'll start rebuilding. Uh, I'll throw a little time to the, the uh, sheriff to maybe determine how best to approach those CDs might be useful. That's what I was thinking too, gentlemen, and Mrs. Hot, and, and every quarter that we leave that money in there is about seven to $10,000 in interest. That was the only thing I was trying to pay a little respect to, but I do agree it's redundant to keep coming in and, you know, I understand. I, under, I was just, just, I'm just thinking out loud while we're delving into this. We're running pretty tight and you know, we did just renegotiate a, a fair increase, you know, and then every, you know, it's twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year, so it's six to $10,000 a quarter. If you guys don't have a project for three months, we saved six to $10,000 added to the interest of the CD. That's the only thing I was thinking about, but uh, I'm definitely favorable, favorable to it uh, being allocated to the revolving loan fund for infrastructure. I definitely think that that's what we ought to allocate the money for, gentlemen, is to repay that back. Okay, do I hear a motion to the effect of uh, the revolving uh, loan fund amount? I believe Commissioner Hart had stated 250000 at one point, but we can clear that up with a motion. But I need a motion, gentlemen, if we I, want to proceed. 
I would move that we allocate the two hundred fifty thousand dollars out of our CD, as dictated by Commissioner Hot. When we pull the money for the broadband project, because we can we only are allowed under a contract one wow. request, so it would have. My motion is is that it it'd be pulled when we pull that other funding is to not take a penalty. I'll second that motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that the uh, revolving loan fund amount of two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars be replenished to the development authority, uh, and we'll do that with the CD um, when the uh, broadband amount first first draw for broadband amount is pulled out all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. motion passed thank you and when do you anticipate that being commissioner you talk I, I don't Cox. know the answer I don't want to quote an answer on that um, mr. Cox came last meeting and we, we made the motion last meeting so we need to talk to Mr. Cox. Um, he is, they he don't is like meeting, to drag their feet on broadband projects, I can tell you that. He's meeting with Hardy Net t tomorrow um, for that that next step. So, um, But now I, I can't give you a date there. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. It should have been his request. It should have been in his request, I think. Thank you, Thank ladies. You guys so much. Congratulations on your retirement again. I can retire happy. <laughs> Do we have anything else? Mr. President, if you would entertain under maintenance and uh, board appointments and res resignations a request of mine. Okay. Gentlemen. Um, in regards to the Economic Development Authority, as you can tell, we're, we're uh, changing things around. And, uh, you know, I really want to pay this board some effort. I've had a lot of people that have given a lot of time. Uh, and, and I, and I want to appoint some better represent or, or some representation in general for, for Cape and Bridge. And, and I wanted to uh, share my research to the commission, which I'm sure you gentlemen may know. but. Uh, I would like to send a letter to the, the town of Cape and Bridge that, uh, addressing the mayor and, the, and their city council in regards to chapter seven of the West Virginia Code 7-12-3. Uh, and if you would humor me, gentlemen, uh, the county commission shall appoint one member to represent the county commission on the board. And for each municipality located within the county, the county commission shall appoint one member to represent the municipality. The city and town council of each municipality located within the county shall submit to the county commission the names of three persons, one of whom the county commission shall appoint to be the municipalities represented on the Economic Development Authority Board. So uh, I would like th this commission to uh, consider sending the town of Cape and Bridge addressing its mayor and council to submit to this commission three nominations for me to uh, or for me to nom to bring to the commission and nominate for us to decide on to represent Cape and Bridge. Romney's representative is the mayor and she, she, I think she does an exemplary job so there hasn't really been anybody needed to be appointed for Romney. For Cape and Bridge I really think we lack representation as far as the town itself. So if you would, and, and we can table this, but I would just like to send them a letter asking them to submit us three names one of which we would pick to appoint to the development authority to represent their municipality. They've had several individuals over the years who have either, uh, last year the mayor sent a, a representative and they came and I think they, they either, they moved on to another job. So we don't have a representative anymore and I just thought it would be a good idea to get them involved. We have the, 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 the tech park down there where we've, before I was commissioner, you guys have done several things to work with Cape and Bridge. We did the revitalization project street. I'd like to see somebody, either the mayor appoint someone from their city council or 
have them present us with three nominations for us to pick from to re represent the town of Cape and Bridge. I thought they had some more left. Yeah, I did too. I wasn't aware they didn't. They, but but I do recall sometimes uh, it used to be the mayor, and then we got to we got to be the one of the council members. I I forget that gentleman's name, but. Uh, yeah, and the, and yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to something. Yeah, I would support that letter, Commissioner Cannon. I think the code spells it out pretty, pretty plainly there, and we we could uh, simply send them a letter, ask and, and quote the code there, and ask them to uh, send us some suggestions for representatives. But I would support that. Thank you. Well, uh, would you like me to make that motion for him? Yep, sir. Mr. President, I move that we send a letter to addressing the mayor and the city council of Cape and Bridge uh, in regards to chapter 7-12-3 of the code regarding county development authorities and to present us three nominations to appoint to the Economic Development Authority. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for a letter uh, concerning uh, codes chapter 7-12-3. Um, on municipalities uh, and the Economic Development Authority. All those in favor, please aye. signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passed. Thank you, gentlemen. We have <clears throat> Lynn McMaster, but, you know, but but I really think we need some more representation from mm -hmm. down there. And, and I know that they're very super, super busy. The mayor has a full-time job. and. The, one of the council members also runs the water department and the, the, the lady that they sent last year did an excellent job, but she stepped down and uh, anyways, thank you. Okay, before we could do any more maintenance uh, and we've, we've hit all the main agenda items, I uh, would uh, allow for any um, public comment at this time. Our crowd has dwindled down a little bit, <laughs> but uh, Okay, hearing none, we will move on to any other maintenance, gentlemen, that we uh, need to address at this time. Any other yeah, that's, that would be under maintenance. Any more board appointments, any correspondence? Um, I, I did want to check on the grant writer position. Well, I've got something on that. Okay. I've got three. Thank you, Eric. Just that's just I'm sure you'd be helpful. Probably know that one too. Oh, uh, again, not to, to uh, put you on the spot and pick one night or anything. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to give you those, and uh, then we have some in-house budget revisions, the uh, invoices, and the estate. Uh, gentlemen, I, uh, regarding the grant writer, Mr. Mance, Cape and Bridge Legal, he sent me an email um, that, that, and you, you all, you know, had a lot more dealings with grant writers than me, but I guess it's sometimes part of the process for a grant writer when they apply for a position to give a sample writing or a sample grant uh, rubric, if you will, or he, I'll forward that to you. Um, I don't know if that's something that you gentlemen would want to make part of the hiring process, but um, I did a little bit of research and I noticed that they do that from time to time when hiring a grant writer, kind of as a a test, you know, of the grant writing skills. Gentlemen, would we want to form a uh, committee to address these applications and, and set up the interview process, perhaps get our, our grant writer, uh, Aaron, yeah. to help us with that yeah. if she's still I, willing. I think she should be involved in the interview process. Uh, the last time I think we had, there was a couple of department heads, I forget, I think the sheriff and maybe the clerk and I forget who else, but uh, 
what you're saying, David, is, is, is okay, but we didn't have that in our, when we advertised, you know, okay. so. Okay. Um, Would one of you gentlemen want to head that up, or do you want me to do it, uh, to, to contact uh, some some county folks to be on the committee? I think it's a good job for the president. All right. I was going to offer it to you you guys first. I don't know. Are you are you biting at the bit to do it, Commissioner Cannon? Hmm. If you tell me to do it, I'll do it. No, I'll, I'll you have to be the bad guy though. I want to hear you say it. I, I will. Uh... Yeah, I don't want to be involved in the process. I, I'll do it, Brian. Okay, if you if, if, if you want if you want to do it, yeah, you can. Um, we, we, we need to set up a committee to uh, do the interview and, uh, you know, each, we don't want, obviously don't want to make the decision tonight, so, I, you know, that's why I said we need it. We need a committee to uh, screen through them. If you're willing to, to contact, like uh, Commissioner Hot said, perhaps the sheriff, I think, I think Aaron Timbrook or current part-time she's still working for us a little bit uh, she she definitely needs to be there you can set that up for us uh, okay appreciate that you need a motion to that committee the yeah. assembly? No, I think we can com point committees All right. without a motion so sheriff Aaron Timbrook and obviously we will have one commissioner on that committee and um, Anybody, anything else we, anybody else we think of, let David know in the next day or two, gentlemen. Okay, what else we got? Well, you already have the invoices there, but yeah, I have uh, three uh, in-house budget revisions. These are minor adjustments within the budgets. You already approved budgets, so there's no additional funding. Uh, one for the prosecutor, two for, one for the sheriff, and one for the treasurer's office. Where did these come from? Sorry. John Walker is not the sheriff anymore. Well, oh, I did prepare. I'm sorry. Is that sheriff Nathan Sines? He signed it. It says Nathan Sines, deputy chief, Sheriff John P. Alcor. Well, then the sheriff needs to watch his. Uh, sheriff sent the sent the old memo yeah. platform, didn't he? I don't know what happened there because his other ones are updated. So somehow he pulled the wrong one there. Are you gentlemen uh, agreeable to these revisions as presented by the prosecutor? I didn't see that. Uh, I've got a flip flop. That's just, it's just moving. That's just moving. You made a mistake. It's just okay. Had, oh, yeah. Had some extra here and didn't use it there. Extension office at the, uh, yeah. huh? I missed that. Okay. They always send one the end of the year too. Check with the auditor. She said they don't even look at that stuff as long as they're under the general mm -hmm. budget amount. I think they're okay. So. I move the in-house budget revision for the the prosecutor and. Uh, uh, New Hampshire County Extension Office be approved. Oh, sure. Huh? A second. Well, yeah, I can include the sheriff in there. Yeah, I can include. I can include them all in there. I'll Just tell him to put that on different letterhead. Huh? Tell him to put that on different letterhead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for the budget revisions, uh, two from the sheriff and. Uh, 
what were they again? Becky Miller, prosecutor. Prosecutor and extension be approved as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. We have a settlement. Commissioner Hot already looked at that. Did you look at him? Huh? Did you look at him? Have you looked at him yet? No, he hasn't had a chance oh. to look at him yet. You just want me to say that mouthful of words, don't I'm you? Gonna, I got it right here. I'm going to read it. Read it. Keep in the front Whenever page ready. so he can read it. Mr. President, I move the Commission approve all probate orders, fiduciary appointments, and qualifications, and all the fiduciary bonds coming before the clerk in the vacation of the Commission since its last regular meeting. Second. Okay. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. down to invoices what and and what was Aaron requesting oh okay invoices gentlemen report on the jail bill. Always, it blows me away how we can pay National Guardsmen $33, $35 an hour, but we can't pay correctional officers 15 bucks an hour. I knew what I was doing there. That's why I was started digging into it and I was you know that's twelve grand or fifteen thousand dollars in interest right there. Yeah that's what I, I mean you agree? I don't know whether they I don't know whether they can survive that long enough. <laughs> well well I, maybe maybe I ought to we, back we off. can we can look in we okay. can check it and then we can um, we 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 can always reconsider since we all agreed to do it. Yeah. Okay, any questions on the invoices, gentlemen, and any comments? I move the invoices be paid as presented.
Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that the invoices uh, presented since our last meeting be approved as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. First, I move we adjourn. Second. It's been moved to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.